So welcome to Technodad Life. And today what we're gonna be doing is reviewing these ingenious devices and seeing if this is a better choice than Ubiquiti. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll try to remember to put links in the description to everything that I cover in this video. So basically Ingenious sent me three things to review a security gateway and what I actually wanted was a net ma network management controller but I said security gateway so this is my fault. So we have to do everything through the cloud. We have a eight port PoE switch. And then finally we have some Wi-Fi 6 uh, 4x4 lights access points. So let's look at the security gateway first. So on the front here we have a console port, a wireless WAN port, a SFP port, and then we have dual WAN ports for redundancy and load balancing, so for improved network reliability. Uh, then we have two extra ports, and this one is an optional extra port. PoE Plus port, uh, so power over internet for connected devices like IP cameras or Wi-Fi access points. So it has a VPN for site-to-site -site or a client VPN for secure remote access. And it also has a firewall with advanced uh, inspection. And it's easily configured with cloud management through the Wi-Fi Express platform. So other things in the box are directions to scan to start. And for the mobile app, we have a power supply. And then we have a console port cable. Next, we have the EWS2910P fits, and this is a eight port PoE switch. This again, we have directions, our switch, our power supply below that. So our switch is a desktop switch, so basically four feet or you can wall mount it. It is a fanless design on off switch on the back here. And so basically we have eight gigabit PoE ports. And so these can use, be used for power, data, th things like again, cameras, VOIP phones and wireless access points. Two SFP ports and those are for network expansion. Uh, the BOE budget on this is 55 watts, which isn't a lot, but it will do enough for access points and things like that. So this has cloud or on-site premises control, and it has an easy to use web interface, which we'll see in a second. Next, we have the Fit Lite 4x4 Lite, which is the EWS 276 Fit. And so this is a stripped down version of the Fit 6. Again, it has the quick start and the mobile app. And so we have a compact re rectangular design with a plastic bottom. It has a reset button, a PoE port, and a 12 volt DC power port. On the front, it has lights for, it has lights for power, ethernet connection, 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. In the box, we have mounting plates. And I've used these before and you just slide them in and that's how you mount them. So you mount this, this part onto the ceiling and then slide it in like that. And then to get it out, you just go like that. So these access points are Wi-Fi 6 with OFDMA and MooMimo. Uh, they're 4x4 for 
spatial streams on both 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, 5 decibel antenna uh, compared to the 6 decibel on just the FIT 6. And it's local or cloud managed either by the FIT controller, which I didn't get, or uh, cloud managed by the FIT app. Okay, so let's th set things up and see how they work. So I have the FIT Express app set on my, up on my computer. Since it's a Mac M1, any iPhone apps you can also put on your computer. Okay, so here we have the dashboard. So we have one one, we don't have the second one, we don't have the VPN, and we don't have a client VPN, but if we had those, those would show up here. We have one switch, one access point, one VLAN, and five clients right now, and three on the Wi-Fi. Here's our usage. I just turned it on. And then uh, our reports. The next thing actually, if we go up to this corner here, this will show you our network so we can have more than one network. So if we have multiple locations, we can access them all here. This is cloud-based because I don't have the uh, cloud key device, whatever they call it. Uh, if we go back, we have our network settings. We can set our country, time zone, schedule, any alerts that we have. So as I was setting this up, this device went down. Uh, to access support, we would go there. And then about tells about Ingenious. We want to go back. We're going to go down to the bottom here. We have our devices. So here's our gateway. If we click on that, it brings up the information about that. We can see we have a host name. We can use a VPN client. Our WAN one is up. And if we click on that, then it gives us our public IP, WAN IP, so on and so forth. So right now I have this connected into my network already. So the router is rerouting, so it's double routing, which you're not supposed to do. Uh, but this is just to show that it works right now. Shows our ports available, our latency, and our throughput. And we have a couple down arrows. The, if we do that, it actually tell the colors tell us what's actually going on. So we have two one gigabit connections. If we go down below, we see our switch. So we're going to click on that. Again, it gives us our MAC address, tells us which switches, uh, which ports are active. Gives us our IP address. And if we click on our tools and port activity, we can click on a port and see what's going on. So we'll click on that one. And it will show us the data activity. Again, not much happening right now on those. Clients on the switch will show us the clients on the switch. If we click on test, then it will start pinging different sites. So here it is Twitter, Google, and Facebook. And then we can reboot, and we can't turn the lights on and off. And we can remove that from the network. Then if we click over here, then we get the access point. We click on that. Then we see our access point, firmware, MAC address, our radios, if we go next to radios, we can fine tune our radio settings. So if we put override network, we can adjust the channel width, the channel selection, the transmit power. And if we don't want to do that, we can just click it off again. Other thing we can again see activity. Uh, this doesn't tell you what address or what website they're going to. It just shows you the bandwidth usage. Uh, here we can do a speed test also. Connectivity, live clients, reboot. So LED blinking, so we press on that and it starts our access point blinking so we can find it. In case we have a lot of them. Uh, below that, we can also put in notes and a photo of uh, where it is so we can find it in the future. Now, if we go down to clients, it will show what device uh, clients are connected. And then Wi-Fi, 
So here's where we make Wi-Fi networks. So basically it comes with two Fit Guest Wi-Fi and Fit Staff Wi-Fi. And so you can turn them on or off on this. You click on it and then you can turn it on or off here. You can hide the radio ID, SSID. You can change the specs on the radio. You can change it from open to password to portal. And you can, over here, you click on the plus, you can add your own Wi-Fi networks. And so how you create VLANs is actually under wired. So it says default is VLAN one. You click on the plus, you put in a VLAN name, and then you give it an IP subset, DHCP, on or off, and if you wanted to vo uh, voice VLAN, and that's how you would add VLANs. So I'm gonna have this set up in my house for a little while, and so we'll see how that goes, and hopefully I'll remember to do a follow-up in a month or two if I don't add in some other network too besides this. But so far pretty nice and easy to manage on the app. Uh, has the basic features that most everybody will want. Uh, it is missing the enterprise features, but at this price point, the access point is only $99. I don't really expect that. So, so that's it for today. Hope you found this helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.